Uh, that's the title of it. Lord, teach us to pray. That's the title of our, our next um, series. Today, um, as I said, uh, walking in truth and love. If you've just joined us there online, uh, I want to welcome you. My name's uh, Pastor Ross Callahan, or Reverend Ross Callahan, uh, and we're here at Greenwood Community Baptist Church. We're looking at 2 John uh, with that title, Walking in the Truth and in Love. Um, I reckon all of us know this fable. I reckon you know this uh, fable, the, the tortoise and the hare. Anyone know that? That old Aesop's fable? No one? Only Jeff. Everyone knows it. Of course it is. And uh, there it is. And so what's the moral of the story? Can I ask you this morning? Come on. Nice and loud. No. The moral of that story is slow and steady wins the race. My mum always used to say that to me. Ross, don't you ever give a run? Slow and steady, do your homework, don't you? You know, slow and steady wins the race. And in many ways, that is really uh, what the little letter of 2 John is all about. The lesson, when it comes to being loyal and faithful to the teachings of the Lord Jesus, slow and steady wins the race. And of course, keep on walking. Uh, this little book brings out a really lovely wordplay, if you care to notice it, in verse 4 and 6. It mentions walk and walking three times in two verses. And then in verse 9, it mentions don't run ahead. You know, John's got something in mind here, and he, he wants to paint a word picture for his readers to get hold of so that they really keep in step with the Lord Jesus Christ's teachings and don't run ahead as they are being prone to. Um, verse 4, there you go. It's given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as the Father has commanded us. Uh, verse 6, and this is love that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. Do you get that repetition? It's quite clear, isn't it? Um, verse 9, anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teachings of Christ does not have God. That's big. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. You know, you see the word play, what it's all about? It's all about walking in the truth. It's all about walking in love and not running ahead. Pretty simple, eh? I think so. So when it comes to following the teachings of Jesus, it's the good old slow and steady wins the race. You know, there's three things I want you to notice this morning, and the first is that the truth is not a truth that we're to walk in, but the truth, specifically. This implies that there's a right truth to walk in and a wrong truth, if you like. You know, something that's not quite right. Which immediately puts this letter at odds with our world, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, I was thinking about this this week, you know. Your truth, my truth, it's such a personal thing these days. There's not the truth in many people's minds. Our, our modern world actually frowns upon the idea that there is a truth, the truth. It really does. I remember we were doing um, an election barbecue at Campsie and uh, bumped into a, uh, uh, a Buddhist lady and we got talking, of course, you know, I'm on the front foot. And she said, oh, that's, that's just your truth. I've got my truth. I said, dear lady, there's only one truth. There can be only one truth. There can't be two truths. You know, you say that in court and you're going to get laughed out. <laughs> Sorry, young, young lady. That, 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 no, there's only one truth here. And um, I remember again up at the ARV where Jenny's working now, Remember, we went up there and preached and we had all the old uh, Anglican wives there because they did out their husbands 
uh, they live out longer than their husbands. All the old, um, what would you call them, the generals or the the, uh, the ladies of uh, the Anglican Church. And I preached on John 14, 1 to 6, and, uh, you know, that verse 6, the punchline, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me except through the Father. And I used an illustration which, you know, um, that pointed out that if the place was on fire here today, the ARB was burning down and there was one door to get out and there was another one but it wasn't the right one, it would actually take you into more fire, a furnace. Wouldn't you want to go through that one door? And they, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, then there is one truth. There is a truth, and Jesus says he is the truth. And I preached like that. I remember the, the, the chaplain, we went to college together, Ben. I can't remember his last name. Anyway, he said, oh, Ross, he said that. <laughs> that was so full on him. But I, I remember that. And we've got to remember that, guys, that we're in a world that really battles with that. I, I, I know of a story, a, a minister prayed at a ministerial fraternal where there's all different religions there. There was uh, Buddhists, there was uh, Muslim, there was other people there from different faiths, and he got to pray, and he prayed in Jesus' name. And after it, some of the other church ministers come up and said, can you not pray in Jesus' name at the end? He said, well, sorry, I have to. I'll continue to do so. And you know what they did? They took up a bit of a letter in the newspaper, the local newspaper, maligning him and saying he was divisive and divisive and all those things. Folks, this is the air we breathe. This is the climate that we live in. <laughs> to claim that there's one truth, oh, boy, you are right out there. You will be branded intolerant, arrogant and divisive if we say otherwise. Well, praise God. Guess what? John says otherwise in 2 John. He says there is the truth, one truth, and it's Jesus. And I love that. And for John, the truth is a very, very big deal in this letter. Just look at this. To the lady, or the elder, to the lady, chosen by God and to her children whom I love in the truth. And not only I, but also all who know the truth because of the truth which lives in us. Do you see that? So much emphasis there on the truth. Just in passing, the lady is a metaphor for the church, uh, referring to the image of, uh, image of the bride of Christ. And if you look at the last verse, verse 13, of course, there is a greeting from John's church, his sister or their sister in Christ. So that's what all it is. It's not anything weird about one lady. That's his, his imagery there. And you see, for John, the truth is a biggie. Why is it a biggie? Because some are walking in the truth. And therefore, some aren't walking in the truth. That's the implication here. Otherwise, John wouldn't be writing this one. Some have fallen away. Some have left the truth and are following a lie because of false teachers. But we'll get there in a few minutes, not yet. But John says some are still walking in the truth, still hanging in there. And when John hears it, he is ecstatic in verse 4. It says, it gives me great joy. He's over the moon that some of his children, some of their children, are still walking in the truth. And that's powerful. That's encouraging for us, guys. It really is. Some are walking in the truth. You know, uh, it reminds me of when we were down Lake Conjola and we got caught in the 219 fires. <laughs> we got no reception. And when we went down to the beach, I remember ringing the children, the kids, and they were just so overjoyed that we weren't burnt, that we were okay, that we were doing all right and we were safe. They were over the moon. They were full of joy. Oh, yeah. That much full of joy, you know, that gives a surf for being down in that. He gives a lecture. She does that. And um, 
That's the kind of joy that John is experiencing. He's so overwhelmed and joyful that they are walking in the truth. Still following the teachings of Christ gives a great joy. Can I tell you something as a pastor? Gives me great joy to find us walking in the truth, continuing in the teachings of Jesus. You know, that, that's my, <laughs> that ticks my box. That gives me great joy and a great sense of comfort and peace, like Maddie was uh, feeling and the other kids, of course, are all on us. The third thing I'd like you to notice is that walking, walking, walking. Mentions it again and again. It's a nice word picture, isn't it? Steady, deliberate, methodical, step by step. Nothing flashy, nothing fancy, walking and walking. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Walking. We do it without even thinking, don't we? Sounds easy. But sometimes it can be really hard. It can be just the sheer distance that's a problem. You know, I live about four k's from the church. Now, I've got no problem walking here to church or getting on the push bike and getting here to church. I'm not the fittest guy, but I can do that, no worries. But if I've got to walk from Guildford to the city, that's a different matter, isn't it? <laughs> that's a long way. <laughs> I'm going to be tired. Maybe some of you are just tired today. You've been walking and walking for a long time. Tired of that sort of doing the same thing over and over again. John says, keep on walking. Keep on walking in the truth. Keep on walking in love. That's what he's saying. Keep on walking in the grace and power of the Lord Jesus. Keep on walking in the truth of the scriptures. And keep on remembering that the truth is in us and will be with us forever. That is great encouragement, folks. It really is. You just got to look at that in verse 1. That the truth is in us and will be with us forever. That's the kind of picture John's painting here for the church. Just keep on walking in the truth. But sometimes it's not just the sheer distance of the walk that's the problem, you know? <laughs> ah, keep on walking. Sorry. That was nice. Uh, Pitt Street Hall. A lot of times when we used to go in there more often than we do now, uh, there's music playing. And when you're walking, I don't know about you, maybe it's just me, you kind of get caught up in the beat of the music and you walk sort of in rhythm with the music. Anyone done that? In a shopping centre, in a mall, or you hear that and you're sort of walking in the rhythm of the music. Yeah? Can you relate to that? I can, I don't know, I might be an old music uh, lover. Um, but you know what? It took all my effort not to walk in that sort of beat to not sort of do that. It was just so catchy. It was so natural for me to just, you know, the music playing, just sort of walking with that beat. And then, so it was very hard. It, it, it took all my effort not to sort of feel like I was walking to the beat of the music. And you know what? It's going to take all your effort not to walk in step with the beat of this world. Can I tell you? Can I say that again? It's going to take all your effort not to walk in tune with the rhythm of this world, with the song that the world is playing. It really will. All your effort. All your concentration so that we might keep in step with the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, this world is playing a tune, don't it? It's a song that plays 24-7, let me remind you. It's so catchy, it feels so good, especially to the natural man. It's a tune of self-gratification, it's a tune of greed, it's a tune of selfishness, it's a tune that you get what you want out of life, it's a tune that's playing 24-7. And folks, we are kidding ourselves if we think that that tune is not getting on the inside of us somehow. And John, the one who loved Jesus, laid on his bread, you know, 
met Jesus and the truth got inside of him and he's never, ever let it go. He writes a letter now that is saying, don't walk in the tune of this world, walk in step with the teachings of Jesus Christ. Keep on walking. Keep on. That's what he did. He learned. He learned to walk to the tune of God's word, not to the tune of the beat of this world. Let me tell you again, it's going to take all your effort. It's going to take all your reading and soaking of the scriptures. It's going to take all your praying, all your giving and worship. It's going to take all your self-control, all your submission, all your yielding to the spirit. It's going to take all your taking up your cross daily so that you don't walk to the tune of this world. Because walking sounds easy, but not in this world. Not in this world, folks. We had that tune playing 24-7 coming from all angles. But truth is not the only thing that John wants them to walk in. He also wants them to walk in love and obedience. And now, dear lady, I'm not writing you a new command, but one we have had from the beginning. I ask that we love one another, and this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. You see what John does here? He he sort of tangles them all up, doesn't he? You're walking in obedience to his commands. You're walking in love. You're walking in truth. You know, truth, love, obedience, they all are tightly interconnected here. And the more you try and tease them out, no, the more you realise you can't. If you're walking in love, you're walking in the truth. If you're walking in the truth, you're walking in love. You're walking in obedience to the commands, you're walking in love. That's the brilliance of this little letter and how John's communicating. Walking in truth, a command from the Father. Walking in love, a command. Walking in obedience to the commands is walking in love. So powerful. Can't do one without the other. Walking in love for John sums up walking in the truth and the teachings of Christ as a whole. It's brilliant, don't you think? It's simple, but it's quite profound. It's quite deep. And there's no way you can think you're being obedient to God if you're not loving your brother and sister. And there's no way (laughs) that you, you can be obedient... You can be walking in love if you're not obedient to the commands of Scripture. That's how tightly they are connected. So how are you going with all that? Are you you walking in love? Walking in the truth? Walking in obedience to commands? We live in a world where it's not easy all the time to do that, let me tell you. He's described the priority of walking. Now he comes to the problem of false teachers and running ahead. And he explains how to recognise and resist this. Just brilliant, honestly. I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world any such person is a deceiver and the antichrist. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Hollywood movies. You're thinking, <laughs> you know, antichrist, 666, mark of the beast, one world government, all that sort of stuff. No. John is saying, no, no, don't, don't think that. Think false teachers present, and there's more than one of them. Many deceivers. Anyone who takes anyone away from the truth. Now, here, the false teachers are probably Gnostics, those who thought Jesus was only spirit and some manifestation or a vision, but not human, hadn't come in the flesh. Dangerous doctrine that undermined the very core of the gospel, you know, the humanity of Jesus, him coming in the flesh, as John wrote in 1 John 14. Not as common today, more likely we have the idea that Jesus was only human and not God, yeah? Remember this, the Da Vinci Vinci Code? You know, where Jesus had a wife and all this sort of rubbish and it was 
he was just a man, absolute stupidity. Uh, they don't know how he sold so many books, ridiculous. And John gives the advice how to resist these deceiver, deceivers, and it's actually timeless. It's that book. Watch out, but you do not, uh, do not uh, lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teachings of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teachings has both the Father and the Son. Now, John's been talking about walking, and now he says, don't run off, or as the ESV says, the ESV version, don't go on ahead. You know, don't go further. Don't be ridiculous, you know. And it reminds me of kids when they're bushwalking. You know, kids run ahead, don't they? They just run ahead. You ever found that? <laughs> Come on, don't go too far. You're running off. Can you imagine getting back to the car and the kids aren't there? They've run off. They've just lost their wits. They've not kept their wits about them. They took the wrong path and just run off. That's what's happening here in the church, in the region there of Ephesus. People are running off after this silly doctrine, this false teaching. They've simply gone the wrong way because they are running and not walking, not watching not keeping in step with the teachings of Christ, not keeping their wits about it. You know, verses 8 and 9 give us a corporate warning. Don't lose what we have worked for so that you be fully rewarded. Now, I don't know fully what that really means, but there is some sort of full reward <laughs> and obviously a lesser reward. John doesn't want him to suffer that loss. So, folks, don't run off ahead. We've seen it, haven't we? Churches, large and small, going after something other than the teachings of Christ. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. You remember the Toronto blessing? You know, it comes swept through the church. Do you remember that? the laughing, all the carry on and all that, a lot of fallout, a lot of people fell away from the cross, the teachings. You know, um, there's other ones you might have heard, the, the emerging church, have you heard of that? The church growth movement, the emerging church that was later than the church growth movement, all, you know, something we can learn from, but they all moved away from the teachings of cross. They didn't really make them the central core of their ministry. Looks good, sounds good. You know what John says? It's not good. In their eagerness to have something new, they left the teachings of Christ and they lose God. That's a big John's pretty serious there. It's a good warning, isn't it? It really is. Not to lose God and not to lose the teachings of Christ. You know, it's funny sometimes when, you know, you know, I've known a lot of churches, different styles of churches and denominations. And often, you know, if you look at the stats, this is just something a bit off the side, maybe we think we're better than we actually are. Listen to this, these stats. 93% of people think they are above average drivers. <laughs> Uh, not in Guildford, I'm telling you. They didn't survey them guys, surely. Uh, 83 of people reckon they are good and hard workers. Now, <laughs> I was just in a supermarket the other day. The sh- shelves weren't filled. I had a job when I was young in Franklin's. My boss, if that shelf wasn't full, she'd be asking me, why isn't it full? We're missing out on sales. What are you doing? Get out the back and get the, get the boxes out. Oh, no, they don't do it here. They have a time to fill and it goes empty too bad. 85% of people think they're great at relationships. Now, that's funny, isn't it? See, we've got a 50% divorce rate. That's funny. And 74% of people think they have great common sense. I don't know, you look at YouTube, you look at those, what is it, TikTok? Are you telling me common sense? All right. 
But it's funny. Maybe we think we're better than we really are. You know, in, in, the, in the rush to be innovative, especially when we live in a world where newer is better, let's watch out, folks, that we don't lose the teachings of Christ. The good old simple walking in truth, step by step, reading the Bible, pray, come to church, getting with each other, fellowship, you know, repenting, loving one another, just those simple things. <clears throat> you know, John sees it as a really serious matter, doesn't he? Look at this verse. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take them into your house or welcome them. Anyone who welcomes them shares in their wicked work. That's full on, isn't it? It sounds harsh, doesn't it? Don't bring them into your house <laughs> because you're sharing in their wicked work. Now, it's a measure of how important John sees this in regard to sticking to the teachings of Christ. That's what it is. He's making it really clear. It's a watch out because that teaching, that deception gets into people. It really does. And he says, don't give them a basis for their work, which brings us full circle into uh, back to what John, John said about walking in the teachings of Christ. You ever seen the walking races? Aren't they funny? Don't you reckon? I can't even do it these days. They got a real, real funny walk, haven't they? But there's a rhythm, there's a step they've got. They just keep that. They can't get out of step. If they start running, disqualify. Correct? They're out. They don't keep that step. And commentators that uh, watch the race, former walkers, they say when the end is near, when the race or they're entering the stadium near the finish line, when the crowd roars, there's a real tendency to quicken the step, to get out of that rhythm, to break the stride. And in the same way, folks, the longer you are a Christian, if boredom, if fatigue sets in, if you just get tired of just doing the simple step by step, step by step, step by step, walking, walking, walking in the teachings of Christ, there's a real tendency to quicken the step, to get the squad to lose the race. I was watching one and I noticed the Aussie team all stuck together and worked together to keep themselves in rhythm. They just tried to keep as a team together. They didn't want to break fall because they didn't want to lose that rhythm of their step and encourage one another to, to walk fast but keep in step, don't run. And it's a real application to this passage, I think. Step by step. I wonder if John has this same sort of image in mind, the image I'm getting from the two John. Step by step, keep walking. Keep walking in the truth. Keep walking in love. That's my message this morning. Keep walking in the truth of the commandments. Keep walking with God. Keep walking. Step by step. And my guess is, and I know that many of you are walking in the truth, and John's word is keep on walking. Keep on walking. <laughs> keep on keeping on for uh, use of a bit of a slogan there. And some of you here are maybe just tired, and God wants to strengthen you this morning and encourage you to get back in step. Just keep on walking. Keep on walking. Back to the simple, not flashy, not fancy, nothing, you know, just, you know, incredible. Just keep on walking in the truth, keep on walking in love, keep on walking in the commandments. Some of you here might be swept up by the beat and the tune of this world. And as I said, it's easy to do. It's playing 24-7. It's on your phone, it's in your tea, it's everywhere. 
in your face. God says through John, get back in step with the teachings of Christ. Get back to those simple things. Start praying. Come to you know, to do all those things. Read the scriptures. Pray. Get back in step. Now, hopefully, none of you have gone after teaching that is not from God, because you're in danger of losing your way and losing God. That's a biggie. And if some of you here are starting to think, oh, this Christian thing, I was hoping the young people might have been here today, is boring, same old stuff, week in, week out. Let me tell you, it's not. It's having God in your life. That's the important thing. It's about having the word of God, about the Holy Spirit living in the truth living in us. Just keep on walking, keep on walking. There may be someone here who hasn't begun to walk in the truth or if you're watching us. That great truth that Christ died for your sins, that God loves you, that he wants to come and live inside you. That you're a sinner, that you need saving and the only way you can save, be saved is through the Lord Jesus Christ through his death on the cross, through accepting his sacrifice and through asking God to forgive your sins through his death. As Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one, no one comes to the Father except through me. Sober but encouraging words from the Lord Jesus as we close this morning. Will you pray with me today? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the Apostle John and his words of encouragement, his simple yet rich words that encourage us to walk in love, walk in truth, the truth, and walk in your commandments. Father, we pray today you would strengthen us, you would realign us, you would help us get back in step with your teachings and walk in love, truth, and your commands in obedience to them. We pray, Father, for your grace and your mercy to be upon us. If you're here today, I just want to encourage you, if you haven't done that, if you haven't come to the Lord Jesus, if you haven't repented and given yourself to him, ask forgiveness, I just want to encourage you to do that. Because then you can begin that great journey of just walking, walking, walking with God. Uh, we're going to have our last song this morning.